firefighters are investigating what caused an early morning fire here in Lexington. The homeowner says he believes it was set on purpose. A southern Kentucky suspect in a domestic violence incident that allegedly led to a drug discovery is speaking out from jail. An eastern Kentucky teenager ended up in the hospital after a fireworks accident. You'll hear from him about what happened. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon to you. Amber Philpott and Sam Dick reporting. We are falling into a stormy pattern the next couple of days with the potential for some of those to be strong or severe. And already, as you can see right here, right behind us, storms are popping up here in parts of Kentucky. And that's why it's a first alert severe weather day. Let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. Chris? Yeah, those thunderstorms that are out there posing a severe weather risk and also the possibility of some local flash flooding. Keep in mind, we've picked up a lot of water over the past couple of days, so areas especially south of Lexington keep a close eye on those water levels. In addition to the severe weather threat, that watches out for all the counties shaded in yellow, and it goes until 10 o'clock this evening. Here is the Defender Radar Network, and boy, I'm telling you, Southern Kentucky right now, your atmosphere is absolutely primed for the skies to open up on us and put down torrential rains that can cause some flash flooding in addition to that severe weather threat. So it's a double-edged attack that we're getting right now from Mother Nature. Bluegrass region had a very strong thunderstorm about an hour and a half ago targeting Lexington. Gets into the bluegrass region, all of a sudden begins to dissipate. Strong thunderstorm here between Mount Vernon and McKee in Jackson County. And some action trying to go up out ahead of this area. So I-75, those counties we were just looking at across southern Kentucky over the next one to two hours, look what is coming in from your west. Look at Campbellsville, back to the west. Training of thunderstorms over some of these same areas can put down some flash flooding rains. This is an area that picked up, in some cases, better than five inches of rain just a few days ago. Severe thunderstorm warnings are out for numerous counties around Bowling Green down toward Nashville, and you put everything in motion. Watch how over the past two hours now we start to see these thunderstorms exploding even out ahead of that main line. So the southern half of the area, flash flood threat is going to really increase over the next few hours. Throw that big line of thunderstorms into the mix, and you've got a lot of heavy rain that is pushing that from behind. Guys, getting a lot of reports of wind damage coming out of western Kentucky, where we've had gusts 60 to 70 miles per hour in a few spots. Greatest instability this evening is across southern parts of the area. That can lead to damaging winds and flash flooding, and of course, we'll be all over it as the evening wears on. Chris, thank you. Now, we have some new information on breaking news in Lexington. A suspect is now in custody as police try to piece together what led to a shooting this afternoon. The victim was found just about an hour ago on Buckhorn Drive. Police say the shooting took place about a mile away on Appian Way. WKYT's Victor Puente is live with the breaking details. Victor? The scene is now clear, but about an hour ago, a man was shot in the intersection behind me. We'll show you what's going on here now. You can see traffic moving just fine. I'm here at App Appian Way and Armstrong M Mill Road. Police say the victim is okay. He was found on Buck Buckhorn Drive. They also say he's being uncooperative with their investigation. A witness tells me he saw one car stopped on Appian when another vehicle pulled up behind them and the driver got out and ran to the passenger side. Police say he fired three shots into the air, two into the vehicle, hitting a man in the arm. Witnesses led police to the shooter. They say they arrested that suspect on Camelot Drive, and they're now searching his apartment looking for that weapon. They also told us they believe these two men knew each other. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you. Investigators are trying to figure out if an early morning fire was in case a case of arson. That fire broke out in a detached garage on Maryland Avenue around 4 this morning. The homeowner says he doesn't believe the fire was an accident. WKYT's Monique Blair has the latest on the man police are now searching for. It's our top story at 4.30. The homeowners say they think the fire was started by a homeless couple who was staying in this garage recently, but they were kicked out because they weren't paying back money. The homeowners say they loaned them. The homeowner's heartbroken daughter says she feels violated because the fire destroyed her pictures of her late husband. Those priceless pictures of Christopher Harris were saved in a box in the garage. Now all she has left is this one picture. Her children's artwork, her first Bible, all her irreplaceable mementos were were destroyed by this large fire earlier this morning. The flames quickly tore through the garage on Maryland Avenue, so neighbors worried the fire would spread 
evacuated their homes. And for people to do that, it's just insane to me. I just don't get it. You know, this is returning kindness with fire. It could have burned down three houses or four houses in a row instead of just that shed. Police tell us they are looking for a man named Ronald Strunk, who they believe may have information about this fire. The 81-year-old homeowner does not have insurance on his garage. He says he thinks the fire caused at least $50,000 in damage. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Firefighters are still investigating the claims that this is a case of arson. They say it's still too soon to say how the fire started. Investigators think Strunk is driving an older Ford Mustang that is spray painted black with a red top and it has temporary Ohio tags. A man who tried to speed away from police is in jail after getting stuck in his wrecked car. Police say an officer tried to stop Thomas Quinard for speeding. They say that's when he hit the gas and took off. Moments later, Quinard crashed on the ramp from New Circle onto Newtown Pike. Police say they found a couple of stolen guns in the car. Quinard was not hurt in the crash and is facing a list of charges. A report of a man and woman fighting ends in a drug arrest. Police in Laurel County say the domestic call led to the discovery of an indoor marijuana growing operation. Police say that Casey Lockhart and his ex wife Christina were fighting Tuesday morning at a home on Kentucky 233 with their two children nearby. One of the suspects is speaking out from jail. She says the domestic violence charges are the result of a misunderstanding. Uh, Casey had just arrived and they came and responded to what they were told. Domestic violence. We had not been fighting. Her ex husband, Casey Lockhart, is charged with assault, endangering the welfare of a minor, and public intoxication. We'll have more on the investigation ahead on WKYT News at 5 30. A Kentucky teenager's 4th of July ended with a trip to the hospital. Yeah, what he thought was a dud turned out to be anything but. Rebecca Smith explains now from Paintsville. Fireworks are a staple of many 4th of July cookouts, but an accident over 4th of July weekend left a boy's hand mangled. Saw the big yellow explosion. Kyle Davis says he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I used to think it was safe until they we were a good 30 feet away from where they were shooting them, but it didn't blow up, but it fell right back down. One of his friends launched a large firework and it didn't go where it should have. Went up in the air and it didn't blow up, so they thought it was a dud. But then about 10 seconds later, it fell down right beside me in my hand. After realizing his hand was bleeding heavily, Kyle's family raced him to the ER. Huge part of his uh, finger was missing and his pinky. His mother, Melissa, says she was surprised to see how much her son was hurt. Every year you hear about statistics and things of, of fireworks and sometimes I just think that you, you think that it can't happen to you as long as you're being safe. But now we know that that's not true at all. Kyle has several stitches in his hand, but doctors say his wounds will heal after a couple of months. They say he's lucky the fireworks only got to his hand. Just a miracle for us that he uh, that the injury wasn't worse. Rebecca Smith, WKYT. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, fireworks sent nearly 12,000 people to the hospital just last year. Country music trio, uh, the country music trio rather, the band Perry abruptly canceled a show minutes before they were set to take the stage in Delaware. We'll tell you why coming up. WKYT first alert severe weather day. Thunderstorms trying to get into the bluegrass region about an hour or so ago, collapsing, leaving us though with a heck of a sky out there in Lexington. Current temperature 88 degrees though, with the humidity, it feels like it is 90. Five steamy degrees. Winds are gusting today, so we're getting back into a pattern that has that combination like what we talked about a couple of weeks ago. A combination that just screams that the atmosphere is loaded and ready to go. You get gusty winds, you get temperatures around 90 with absolute high humidity. That is one signal from the atmosphere that it's ready to rock and roll. First, a big cluster of thunderstorms, western, southern parts of the area. Severe thunderstorm watch until 10. This evening, and look at all the severe weather the farther south and southwest that we go. There's that little thunderstorm cluster dying right on top of downtown Lexington. Get into McKee, Jackson County, points to the south. Got a couple of, uh, a couple of rumbles of thunder 
But that's really nothing to get too excited about right now. The big show is just off to our west. Look at this complex of strong thunderstorms. Campbellsville heading toward Liberty into Casey County. These are some of the same areas that over the 4th of July holiday weekend picked up greater than 4, 5, and 6 inches of rain. Back through LaRue County and right on top of Interstate 65 toward Bowling Green. Severe thunderstorm warnings are out for numerous counties here. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking the overall wind damage threat may be coming down a little bit, but the flash flood threat is increasing a bit as you get these storms that are kind of lining up and moving over the same areas one by one. If you're watching us into Liberty, into Columbia, uh, toward sections of Monticello, Russell Springs, Jamestown, Somerset. We're going to watch those areas very closely over the next couple of hours for some high winds and maybe some high water. And a big cluster of thunderstorms zipping its way across western Kentucky. A lot of wind damage out there. It even, uh, even has a spin with it. That's when you know it's a healthy complex of thunderstorms. Future radar through the evening targets parts of southern Kentucky. This model is bouncing around a little bit, not doing the absolute greatest job for all the models and picking up on where those clusters of thunderstorms go. But boy, if this is absolutely correct, southern Kentucky, you're going to have some high water to deal with as the evening wears on. High winds with additional thunderstorms that come our way over the next few days and flooding rains would be the primary players. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Of any of those storms. Uh, tornado threat is low in this type of a setup, but it isn't a zero threat. That makes sense. Outside of any boomers, it's hot, it's humid, with uh, humidity really leading the charge. That hour by hour forecast, this is a little different computer model than the one we were looking at for that future radar over the next 12 hours. This fires up another cluster of thunderstorms that target southern parts of the area. Really, really tomorrow night into Friday morning, watching the northwestern skyline for a complex of thunderstorms. That may develop and then follow a little axis of instability right on into central and eastern Kentucky. You are seeing that little line of thunderstorms developing on this hour by hour tomorrow evening. That may be kind of uh, showing where a big complex of thunderstorms will then develop to our northwest and then aim toward. That would be right on top of our part of the world. And late in the day, Friday into Friday evening, we stand uh, the risk for another strong or severe thunderstorm during that time. If it makes you feel better, Saturday continues to look okay at 84 degrees with a partly sunny sky, isolated thunderstorm threat back by Sunday and into much of next week. Next three days, or next two days, including uh, what we're getting out there this evening, are going to be awfully bumpy mm. for much mm. of the area. This evening, mainly southern Kentucky. Okay. Quite a bit of heat, too. Yeah. A lot of heat, and that's feeding those storms. It's heat index at 95 right now in Lexington. Whoa. It feels it's it. Yeah, every it every bit of it. Every degree of it. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Pain treatment, weight loss, cellulite reduction, all benefits of the Cryo House. I'm T.N. Stevens, out and about with more today. It's a 21st century ice bath that takes three minutes, has no sting, no numbing sensations, but all the benefits. How about that? Our D.N. Stevens is out and about at the Cryo House with all the details. Hi, D.N. Good afternoon, guys, from the Cryo House here in Lexington, brand new place in town. You may have seen it on like Housewives, Dr. Oz, I think LeBron James talks about doing this. What in the world is the Cryo House? Tammy Breitner is with us. What am I doing? You've got me here in this freezing cold chamber. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a three minute session to cool your skin surface temp to help control the inflammation. Um, you can use it for the weight loss where you burn 500, 800 calories with each session. That's what the housewives do, right? It's about weight loss and cellulite <laughs> reduction for them. But for you, I understand you did this because it benefited you greatly with some pain you were having. Yes. Um, I have arthritis, and I use this on a regular basis to help control the inflammation, and it's done wonders for me. So I hope to help other people. So what is what are what am I in? What are the what are, what are we doing right here? <laughs> we are <laughs> <The> using cold, <laughs> freezing my brain. <laughs> we are using liquid nitrogen gas to cool your skin surface temp. And that's what happens. Now, some of the other treatments that folks use, which involves like the elliptical that's over here, they're in here for three minutes. How does that work? Yeah, so they'll do this for three minutes and then step out for five and do the elliptical. So then that way it warms their body up a little quicker. Okay, now how can folks get more info on the Cryo House? Like how do they sign up? Do you have packages? Yes, we have packages available and we're also running a new client special at the moment. Um, you can find us on the cryohouse.com. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay, it's my three minutes up. I'm ready to bust it out is. of here. <laughs> I'm Dean Stevens out and about at the Cryo House, located on West Timberton here in Lexington. Burr! Back to you guys.
It's very interesting, very scientific, it sounds like yeah. there. Yeah, well, I've done ice baths at home, mm -hmm. and it's not a pleasant experience, so maybe that's <laughs> a little bit better. And we'll see. The country music trio, the band Perry, postponed a sold-out show in Delaware minutes before it was supposed to start because of security concerns. Police say the two men made threatening comments against the venue when they could not buy tickets to the sold-out show. An employee says that one of the suspects said, what if we jump the fence with guns? One of the men turned himself in and is charged with a felony of terroristic threatening. Police say they have identified the second man, but he has not been arrested yet. The concert is rescheduled for August 17th. A special honor for Smokey Robinson and J Lo teams with the creator of the hit Broadway show, Hamilton. They are honoring the victims of the Orlando shooting. Danielle Nottingham has those stories and more in today's Eye on Entertainment. Jennifer Lopez and Hamilton's Lynn Manuel Miranda are joining forces to produce a song to honor the 49 people killed at an Orlando nightclub last month. Lopez released a sneak preview of Love Makes the World Go Round on YouTube. So far, there's no release date. Money raised will help fund mental health services for survivors of the shooting. Rhythm and Blues icon Smokey Robinson will be honored by the Library of Congress for his lifetime achievement in pop music. He's this year's Gershwin Popular Song Prize recipient. The 76-year-old Robinson helped create some of the biggest hits in Motown history as lead singer of The Miracles. A remake of the Spice Girls smash debut hit Wannabe is in the works. Spice Girls fan and British filmmaker MJ Delaney was nine when the song topped the charts 20 years ago. She assembled an international cast to promote girl power, education, and gender equality. Former Spice Girl Victoria Beckham says she thinks the remake is a great idea. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Los Angeles. Chrissy Teigen may have been a swimsuit model, but that doesn't mean she wore them in the water. Turns out neither Teigen or her husband, Grammy winner John Legend, can swim. But now that they have a baby, Luna, Teigen tells People Magazine mom and dad both plan to learn as part of being good parents. It's the case of the stolen leggings, but the thief in this story seems to be remorseful. More on that coming up. A lot to talk about when it comes to weather today. We're talking about the potential for these severe mm -hmm. storms, but you knew early on in the day it was going to be pretty miserable in terms of the heat out there. Yeah, that heat's a big part of it. Chris, we've learned that. You've taught that, that the heat is, can be a big part of developing a storm, right? Yeah, and especially when you throw in all this humidity. Those temperatures are mainly upper 80s right now, but the humidity makes it feel like it's into the mid-90s. For live sky cams, Frankfurt, we had a thunderstorm come through there a little earlier, breaking apart. Just in time to reach Lexington with a little bit of cloud cover. London, this is going to be the area up to Jackson. We'll target for some more thunderstorms to go up over the next several hours. There is a severe thunderstorm watch that is out for areas in yellow. That will go until 10 o'clock this evening. Does not include downtown Lexington, but look at all the thunder and lightning that is taking shape across southern parts of Kentucky. It's a big thunderstorm that is working out of southeastern Kentucky, but we're watching stuff around Bowling Green. Those warnings are getting close now to the uh, Adair County line and uh, eventually will impact Somerset down toward the Lake Cumberland area. High winds, very heavy rain, the main threats as we go through the next several hours across parts of southern and southeastern Kentucky. Let's quickly talk about the traffic situation, see what's going on across Lexington. Had a couple of accidents that have now been cleaned up, but a new one showing up on our live drive traffic that is into the Squires Road area. Accident there at Alumni Drive, so likely to see a bit of a backup on Alumni. An ambulance stolen with someone inside and a narrow escape on a boat. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. A man is in custody after police say he stole an ambulance from outside a Florida hospital and took it for a joyride. The man stole the ambulance while it was parked outside an Orlando hospital, but little did he know an EMT was still inside. Police say the medical technician was able to jump out without getting hurt. Uh, listen to the play by play, according to investigators. He was in the back and he was yelling at him to stop the truck. And the gentleman, whoever it was, slowed down the truck and he jumped out. Uh, the EMT jumped out of the truck. And there was a, a, a chase ensued with different rescue units that were in the area uh, that heard the call and uh, followed him to this location. And the guy bailed out of the truck. A good Samaritan helped hold on to the driver until police could arrest him. Police say it's lucky that no one was hurt in the chase.
A retired veteran is lucky to be alive after his boat burst into flame shortly after leaving the dock. Take a look at these photos of that fire fully engulfing the boat. The boat's owner, Timothy Lenz, said he was below deck when he smelled smoke and then moments later flames covered his boat. Lenz said he had no choice but to abandon the ship. Afterwards, the military veteran recalled having some close calls while serving overseas but said this, however, was his closest. A remorseful thief was apologetic for what he did, but did not return what was stolen. Indianapolis resident Leslie Miller says she was waiting all week for a package. It contained a long-awaited pair of leggings that Miller had been searching for for weeks. But instead, when she opened her mailbox, she found $25 and an apology. She says on the $20 bill, the thief wrote, stole your pants, felt sorry about it. And while Miller says she appreciates the apology, she wonders why the thief didn't just return the pants. She adds that if the thief really wanted to cover the cost of the crime, he or she still owes $10. <laughs> but Miller says keep the change, just return her pants. Yeah, when you have searched and searched for something like that and it finally comes and then someone steals it. Frustrating? It is frustrating. I can only imagine Man. for her. All right, we are tracking some serious storms for you this afternoon. Stick with us. There's more to come here at 5 o'clock.